Hello everyone, welcome to Bible Corner Reviews. Today's video is on the New King James Large Print Thin Line Reference Bible from Thomas Nelson. This one is a line extension, which means that this Bible has been in existence for a period of time already, but this is a new cover option that is available. So you may be familiar with this Bible layout, but not this cover. So let's take a look at the box. This is the black genuine leather and a feature of this is the words of Christ are in blue. So that's a little bit different than a lot of the traditional Bible layouts. And this one is also from the McLaren series, which came out a couple years ago and has a couple unique features, one of them being blue accents. So this is kind of a double feature of this Bible. You'll see a design on this cover of the box, and that'll be significant as we move into looking at the Bible itself. Let's take a look at the back of the box. This does have the comfort print from 2K Denmark on the New King James translation. Here's a couple features on the back here. This you'll notice there's 43,000 cross references, so not the full set of New King James cross references, which makes sense because this is a smaller quote thin line Bible. This one's printed in China. The retail is 119.99. This one I found for around 75 to 85 dollars depending on if you get the indexed this one is not indexed and then the leather soft the imitation leather options are around 38 dollars so this is a very affordable bible even for the leather edition which you'll see why that's a decent price for what you get so let's take a look at this bible the leather is a very supple semi-soft cowhide and it's got a nice grain to it very it's a very beautiful bible and you'll see as we go along there's perimeter stitching all the way around corner work on the exterior very uniform the spine has five raised hubs something i really enjoy and then there's gilding on the top and bottom of each hub. So it kind of helps pop those out and you can see them a little bit better. There's Holy Bible, New King James, and Thomas Nelson. If you look at the spine from a distance, it's very simple and that's something I really enjoy. I don't like having very noisy or cluttered spines. And then the ISBN on the back, part the usual for a non goat skin Thomas Nelson Bible. There are two ribbons, 3 8 inch double satin, aka 10 millimeter, and they're angle cut, black and blue, and you have black head and tail bands. So obviously before we get too much further, as you can see, the page edges are designed, and this is called Gofford page edges. I'm not the quickest sometimes when it comes to getting all my binding terms, but Pretty sure I knew that that's what this is called at one point, but I was reminded of that again when watching a review of this Bible. And so that is your technical term, Gofford. These ones, despite what it may look like from, from a video, are actually engraved. So it's not stamped and it won't come off as easy as just scraping the gilding. Obviously, if you scrape off all the gold, it'll be difficult to see, but it'll still be there because it's engraved, it's not stamped. The Bible is edge lined, has a synthetic liner. See the tab here. Corners are not pleated, but they are all clean and even. So another check there. The stitching is very nice as well. It's small, it's a very thin stitch, but it's clean. And that is true for all the corners. The yap on this Bible is actually a 3 8 inch yap, so it, it overhangs, you can see. In other words, the yap is the, the part of the Bible that overhangs the text block. And I have not trained it, but since this is a synthetic liner, once you bend that, it will stay because that paper will fold. So I did not want to do that yet until I did a video because I wanted you to see what you'll be getting out of the box. Before I go any further, um, the dimensions on this Bible and I'll give you two sets of dimensions because with the cover, it does add a little bit. So 
as is with the cover. It's 10 inches tall by six and three quarter inches wide by an inch and one quarter at the spine. Then with the block, it is nine and a quarter inches tall by six and a quarter inches wide by one and an eighth inches thick. So if you're familiar with the thin line editions of the Bible, typically that means it's around an inch thick, but due to the nature of it being large print and with references, they, they got it as close as they could. So it's a little bit out of the thin line category, but considering the size of the Bible, it's still very thin. Opening this up, here's your tab. Something I did notice and you can see here is the tab at the crease between where the paper, both sides of the paper meet is a little bit weak. But at this point, that helps keep the Bible flat when you open it. But I think maybe down the road, depending on how long you own this Bible, that may need to be taped at one point. I'm not sure of that, but that's just something to keep in mind. It's not necessarily a bad thing because that is very repairable, even without having any experience, but it's just something to note. Here's the presentation page. Not even a full cardstock. It's just a glossy, normal paper thickness. Holy Bible, a little bit more with Holy Bible, Thomas Nelson, New King James. And here is the publication page. You'll notice here that 2018 was when the large print thin line reference was released. And then 2023 is when this cover option was made available. And this one is printed in China. Table of contents, preface, the Old Testament, you'll start seeing here the blue accents, and then the text. And you can see that this Bible is staying open, but the tab is pushing up that section of pages there. I have flipped through this Bible all the way, so it's a little bit better than when I took it out of the box, but that tab is still going to cause a little bit of friction in that area, which is always going to be the case with Edline Bibles. So the specs on these pages, I think this is around a 36 GSM. It's what it feels like. And it's a not a hard white, but it's a very white paper. There's no cream color to it. Line matched, so ghosting is very minimal and it's very easy to read. And this is advertised as a 10 point font. And so I'm pretty sure that that's what it is. I don't have any of the older editions to compare it to. So you'll have to look to someone else for those comparisons. But I believe the older ones, some of them said 11 point, but it's exactly the same. So it's around a 10 and 11, if not 10 and a half. Double column, paragraph format, the no verse by verse, and then textual footnotes and cross references at the bottom of the page, which is something that I particularly enjoy because I don't like having my cross references interfere with my reading experience, but oftentimes I do appreciate having them on the page to reference if I need to. So this design is one that I have come to really love because everything's there, but I can think of it as being one or the other whenever I want to without too much difficulty. There's no edged um, perimeter stitching on this edition, something I've pointed out about the Chinese printed copies of the Bible from Thomas Nelson. They often do not have overcast stitching, and this one is no exception. Let's flip to a more central page here so you, I can point out the slight inconsistency with the gutters and the margins. So. Most of the way through this edition, it might not be the same with every one of them, but this one, the gutter and the margin vary in dimension a little bit. So typically the gutter is a half inch, but it can be anywhere from a half inch to nine sixteenths. So occasionally that will be noticeable, but not often. The margin also is three eighths to a half inch. So it will adjust a little bit as you go through. The top margin and the bottom have been consistent when I measured, the top being half an inch and the bottom being seven eighths. So the text on the page does move around just a little bit as you're going through, but overall it stays out of the gutter 
and it's fairly easy to read even in the thicker sections. Poetic settings, if I can find them, are verse by verse, par the usual with paragraph styled Bibles. Nothing too much to comment there. Very typical. And then the New Testament has perhaps the most internal um, unique feature, and that's the blue letters or blue words of Christ. Now this is something that Bible publishers have started to do more often, and I think Humble Lamb is the other major publisher that I've seen doing blue letters. But from what I understand, this is more easy to read for people who are colorblind than red editions, which kind of fade a little bit with the colorblindness. So that's something to consider if you're colorblind or know someone who's colorblind, this might be something for them to try. Me personally, who am, I'm not colorblind, but I'm not a fan of red letter often, but I'm actually on the fence as to whether I like blue or red better. I'm just not particularly uh, fond of having Jesus words a different color, but that's just me and I know a lot of people really enjoy that. All of the features of the New King James translation are here that you'll be familiar with if you normally use the New King James. And the, as the box stated, this is only around 43,000 cross-references, so that includes as well the textual footnotes. It's not the full set, so because this is a thin line, they didn't include all of that, and that's obvious because if you did, it would not be a thin line anymore. The concordance has, um, as I got from R. Grant Jones in his video on this edition, he does a lot more intricate detail, which I often omit just due to length of time. But his estimations on the concordance were that it's around a 6.5 text size, around, I think there's 39 pages of concordance and around 2,500 keyword references. So. There's just some features of this. Again, the keywords are blue, blue accents. So fairly easy to find. There's a note on the te text at the back and then eight semi-glossy maps. And that ends your Bible. Again, you can see the page tab at the back here it just kind of bends over. So there is the large print thin line reference from the McLaren series in black genuine leather with goffered page edges. I just wanted to make a couple comparisons. One was the large print reference Bible in the original McLaren release. And this one is verse by verse, but it is also a McLaren, so it will have some similarities. One of them being the cross references at the bottom of the page in the blue accents. So this one I think is like a 10 and a half, where this one is a 10. So it's a little bit bigger, and that makes the Bible a little bit bigger. And I can't remember if this one has all of the cross references or not, but it is a little bit thicker. This one is also a really nice Bible, and I'll link the review in this video. So there is the other McLaren reference that I have. I don't have any others from that line yet, but they do have blue accents as their main feature. And another one I wanted to point out was just the Skylar Quintel, which again is the bottom of the page references. And this one is the ESV, so page numbers and all that are gonna be a little bit different in sizes, but it'll at least give you an idea for this layout. So you can see there, this one is an 11 point, but you have cross references at the bottom of the page and they are differentiated by red highlights instead of blue. And this one does have a line, but it's the same design. So again, this is fairly popular design and one that I personally really enjoy because it is easier to read and use in reference situations if you have to. So there is my initial thoughts on this amazingly beautiful Bible. Very entry level premium and also very practical in a lot of its features. So hopefully that was helpful 
and thank you for watching.